Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today and I am wearing today's project and showing another version of this project on the dress form here. We're going to be sewing up a peasant style top and I have a free pattern on my site for you to make this with the elastic casing at a waist length, at a longer tunic length without the elastic, or I will even tell you how I made this cropped version that would be stomach bearing if you wanted to wear that. So check out the link in the video description to get all the pattern details, download that pattern, and then I will meet you back at the camera to show you how to sew it up. Okay y'all, let's go over the pattern pieces. First we have the front and that's cut on the fold and then I have the back and that is also cut on the fold. And because I'm making a cropped version of this, let's take a look at the pattern real quick. I have gone and I have cut my pattern off three and a half inches below this length and shorten line. For the very cropped, like the really cropped stomach bearing version, I went and I went two inches above that length and shorten line which the length and shorten line should approximately hit you at the waist. So that's a good landmark to figure out how much shorter or lower you would like to cut it. And then finally, we also have two sleeves and then I have two pieces of elastic here. I have a 28 inch piece for my neckline and I have a 30 inch piece here for the bottom and I have two 10 inch pieces for the arms. Now, if you adjust the sizing at all, you will want to adjust the elastic as well. If you wanna wear this off the shoulder, you're gonna to want to add an inch or two to those elastic measurements. If you want a smaller neckline, you can gather it in further with the elastic. It's pretty flexible pattern. I also have a safety pin to thread that elastic and I have some single fold bias tape that I made. Now you can make your own bias tape and I have a video linked below that shows how to do that or you can purchase it. And then of course I've got my sewing machine thread, all of those things. So I am going to begin here with the back of my shirt and I'm going to open this up and I'm going to stitch the sleeve pieces to it. And I would like to do French seams with this. So I have another tutorial all about French seams. It's linked below. So in order to sew a French seam, you're going to match up your seams wrong sides together first. And then I'm going to take this over to the machine and I'm going to move my needle all the way over to the right so that I can stitch this with a very small seam allowance. And then what you do is after you've stitched that seam allowance, you go ahead and you flip this wrong or right sides together and you want to go ahead and press that seam allowance. I am just going to finger press it here for the purposes of this video, but if I was not on camera, I would definitely take this over to the iron. You want to make sure that it is pressed right on that edge. And then I'm taking this back to the machine and I'm going to stitch that seam again and I want to use a little bit deeper seam allowance this time. So I used one eighth of an inch already and I'm going to do the other three eighths of that half inch seam allowance now. All right, here is my seam. And as you can see, that is the correct seam on the right side. And on the inside, I have all those raw edges bound inside that double stitching of the seam so that they're not going to fall off. So once I get one side sewn to the back, one side of the sleeve sewn to the back, I would go and I need to sew the other sleeve to the other side of the back here. And I'll just repeat that process again. Okay, you can see here that I've got the back sewn and I've got a sleeve on each side. And so now what I need to do is I need to sew the front on. I'm gonna move over here to one sleeve 
and I'm going to pin the front in place. And then just to help myself keep everything straight, I'm going to go ahead and pin the other sleeve to the other side of the front at this point. And then I will French seam these just like I did the back. Okay, you can see this sort of starting to take shape. Here is my front piece, and then I've got two sleeves out to the side. Let me stitch and finish those two seams, and then I'll give you a better view of it. So here we go, this is the back, these are the sleeves, here is the front. I've pressed all my seam allowances towards the sleeves. So these back ones go towards the sleeves, front ones go towards the sleeves. And what I need to do next is I'm going to fold this and I want to match these underarm seams here. And I'm going to stitch twice to French seam these as well. So what I'm doing here is I'm sewing the sleeve seam and the side seam all in one go here. Okay y'all, I have the sleeve sewn up. I'm trying to keep this away because the iron is hot. But I have those underarm seams sewn and now it's time to iron on some casings and I'm going to move around to the side here to show you that. I'm going to be doing a casing on the arm and or sleeve and also at the bottom of this shirt. And I think let's actually show you the bottom one because that's going to be easier to see on a flat surface like this. So all I want to do is press up about a quarter inch. So I'm going to go all the way around pressing up that quarter inch and then because this is the elastic that I'm going to be using on the bottom here. I want to press up enough so that I have room to put that elastic in and also stitch next to it. So it's going to be about a 3 eighths of an inch the second pass. And I'm just going to do that all the way around the bottom and then I will be doing the same thing on the bottom hems of the sleeves and then we will be stitching those. Okay y'all, I've gotten all of those casings pinned and ironed. Um, I actually don't even have pins on this. And I have taken this part of my machine off so that I can use the free arm portion to sew the sleeves. Moved my needle all the way over to the left and I'm just going to sew right along the folded edge of this casing. Okay, here is where I started stitching, so I'm going to stop with a little bit, about an inch to go. And then what I want to do is thread my elastic through that casing, and I've made little dots on the ends of my elastic here that's going to help me make sure that this is right side up when I thread it through so that I don't get my elastic twisted. So I'm just going to use that safety pin to push this through the casing. And then I'm going to pin this end to the shirt so that I still have the opening there, but also so that the end doesn't get pulled into the casing. Because then I'd have to pull it out and start all over. Okay, there's my blue dot. So I've pulled it out right side up again and then I just want to take my two ends of elastic here I'm going to overlap them take them over to the machine where I am going to switch to a zigzag stitch and you can see I've literally just zigzagged the ends together I'm going to pull all that elastic into the sleeve casing and then I'm going to hold the casing flat here and stitch that little gap closed. And then just trim off my extra threads. And I repeated that on the other sleeve and on the bottom. Now note, if you don't want this cropped version that kind of uses the elastic to keep it anchored, then you don't have to put casing or elastic on the bottom. You can just hem it. But here's the bottom of mine, and I have gone ahead and done a little casing here.
So all that's left now is to do the top. And before I get to pinning the bias tape on the top, I'm actually going to stay stitch it. And all that means is that I am going to sew a line of stitching all around the top of the neckline here. And that's going to help keep it from stretching out when I sew the bias tape on. I am sewing very close to the edge here. And being careful not to pull my fabric while I'm stitching. All right, this is really kind of easier to see on the wrong side of the garment here. So I've just done a little line of stitching about an eighth of an inch in from the edge. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my single fold bias tape, gonna open it up, and I actually wanna start at center back. So here we go, center back. Folding those seam allowances together so I can tell where center back is. And I am marking it with a pin. So I want to take the end of my bias tape and I'm going to cut that angle off. And then I actually want to open up my bias tape and I want to fold in my edge like that. And that is how I'm going to start. And then I'm just going to pin bias tape all along the edge here to the neckline. All right, once you have pinned the bias tape all the way around, cut it a little bit past center back. And then do the same thing that we did at the start where you're going to fold it so these just meet at center back and pin that in place. And then we are going to take this to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch in this fold that is closest to the raw edge all the way around. All right, y'all, once the bias tape is stitched all the way around the neckline, then you're going to want to use the iron and press it towards the wrong side. And I've already gone ahead and done that. And then what we're going to do so we're going to start in the back here where there's those two folded edges and I'm going to stitch this other edge of the bias tape all the way around to make a casing. I've gone ahead and switched my top thread to navy blue to match the bias tape, but I have left my bobbin thread red as I've been using all along because that's the color that shows least on the outside here. Here we are at center back again. I'm just going to stitch right across. Trim off these threads. And then those two folded down edges at center back are where I can insert my elastic. So this is exactly the same process as I did on the casings for the sleeves and the bottom now. I'm just gonna pull that elastic through, stitch it together, and then I'm done. All right, once you have the elastic put through that bias tape casing, then this is your finished project. And check out this playlist if you like sewing clothing. There are more clothing sewing projects there.